So I'd recently made a video on how investing in coconut or coffee funds could get you a citizenship, a passport in four weeks. In this video, I'm going to elaborate. I'm going to discuss how a single person in a family of four can get the passport using the coffee fund for $24,000 per person approximately versus let's say you do the coconut oil fund you could get the passport you could get the nationality in as low as nineteen thousand dollars per person for a family of four and in this video i'm going to discuss something very interesting about the peru citizenship the peru passport which is possible in two years and this has some connection the passport that you get through the coconut oil or the coffee fund option could help you in your pursuit to eventually get the Peru citizenship, which is an APEC member, a full APEC member. So remember when I say the strongest passport in the world is the Mexican passport, this mimics a lot of the features, especially the full APEC access. So you cannot go wrong with the Peru passport. Plus this passport is red in color. It has all the bells and whistles. It's one of the strongest latin passports that you can collect but first let's discuss the investment options with the vanuaru citizenship that passport gets you access a direct access to peru as early as 45 days you could get this ship to your home address it could take more time in certain cases at this time if you start this month you would not require to be in Vanuatu to collect the passport. It would be mailed to you. But once the biometrics kicks in, which can kick in any time next month or the month after, then you're looking at a trip to Vanuatu with your family to collect the benefit from inside the country. Now, regarding the investments, which one should you go for, right? Is the coconut oil fund better than the coffee fund? What's the difference? If you see at the face value or the upfront cost, the coffee fund is cheaper than the coconut oil fund. And we work with the direct processors in each of these two options, right? These are different direct vendors who communicate and deal with the government. So they have a slight variation. So when you talk about the coffee fund, the upfront cost is cheaper, it's lower. So you're looking at the $50,000 investment component. Now this is a pure investment that goes in the coffee fund. The projected interest rate is as high as 4% per year. If you do the math, that comes to $2,000 per year in income or $50,000 investment. So you're looking at 8,000 after four years. If you add that up with the 50, you're looking at 58. If you subtract that from the eventual total that you're paying, there is a donation component to this, right? So the donation component in case of the coffee fund is 105. And if you subtract the 50K and the profit, which is $8,000 over a period of four years, the 58K from uh, the overall total, then you could be looking at a citizenship at 97K, which is on an average 24K something for one person for a family of four. Now, when you compare and contrast this with the coconut oil fund, this is slightly higher upfront. You still have the same investment component, which is $50,000. The interest rate with this one is astronomical. It's 18% right now. Now, I personally don't expect this to sustain over the next four to five years. But let's say in the best case scenario, and this is not immigration or investment advice, this is just my own opinion, analysis, and projections. So let's say it sustains the 18%. At this rate, you're looking at $9,000 per annum. Uh, if you do that for five years, you're looking at around $40,000. You add that to the 50, you're looking at eighty dollars to $90,000 in returns. And then the donation component in this case is slightly higher. It's one fifteen for a family of four. You add all of this, you sub subtract the income and the initial 50k from all of this then you're looking at around 75 to 79k of a total cost for a family of four which averages at nineteen thousand dollars something per person 
again, for a family of four, that is. So effectively, if you ask me what is cheaper, then the coconut oil fund is cheaper. But if you ask me what's the lower upfront, then the coffee fund is a lower upfront cost for you. Once you pick the, the option of your choice, uh, Vanuatu is better, in my opinion, than the Caribbean ones because there, there's a lot of sharing of data, sharing of information. Now, think of this as a search warrant, right? When cops turn up at your door, they want to search your home. You're not going to invite them. That's inviting trouble because they could find something else. Maybe they could frame you in certain cases, right? So you don't give them an open invitation to come search your property. That's not necessary. If they have a search warrant, then yes, you let them in. Similarly, when you're doing a citizenship, you're giving them open invitation to share your information, let's say with your home country governments. And I'm not saying all the Caribbean ones are bad based on your circumstances. That could be the only option let's say you want to travel and stuff but let's say you have some money you're doing some economic activity then sharing of that information is a problem for a lot of people with Vanuatu I, I think it has stuck it out it has shown character and strength it has stuck to its word because of which it has lost most of the visa free access so if you're not visa free hungry you have some decent passport or as I said you're targeting your main passport let's say it's a Mexico or the Peru passport then you're looking at an interim citizenship interim solution then this one does show a lot of character and punch. So in that sense, I think this passport is slightly better than some of those Caribbean options. Now, how fast can you expect this? As I said earlier, 45 days plus, you could expect this passport. Starting now, you're going to get a waiver on a lot of the processing fees after the next month, of course, that's gonna go up. So the, the pricing would change slightly as far as the processing fees is concerned. But this month is a special month. Up to November 15th is the date. Remember, at any point in time, either funds you want to get started, you can always click the link, book a call. We can discuss which one works best and which one you could pair with your future residency and get you started with both options. So you're not only looking at a quick passport, let's say in 45 days plus, but you're also looking at your long-term objective. Either it's a two-year citizenship, let's say you're doing Peru, or you're doing the five-year citizenship, or the two years in case of Mexico. Either option works fine. Now, once you get this Vanuatu passport, this does have some very interesting access. It does retain the overseas territories access, which is a major benefit. What it also has is a visa free to Peru. Now, when you have that visa free to Peru, Peru is one of those handful of countries which lets you enter on the visa free into the territory. And then you lodge your application for a temporary residency in Peru. Once you gain the residency from inside the country, a lot of my clients really find applying for a tourist visa a hassle. There's some countries where you can't even do that. Your intent was to do tourism, but you came and you filed for residency. That could trigger immigration fraud in some cases. So you want to do this correctly, right? But if it is a visa free, your intent is not really understood. Maybe your intent is genuinely to file for residency, which it is. So let's say you get the Vanuatu passport, you enter visa free in Peru, you are eligible for your temporary residency. And again, we can help you with that as well. There are several ways where you could get the Peru temporary residency. Once you launch your application for TR, you get the temporary residency in a couple of years, you apply for your Peruvian citizenship. And now you have a dual citizenship, powerful pack, right? You have Peru, you have this Vanuatu sitting in the background. So you have killed multiple birds with a single stone. And this is one of the most effective and the cheapest possible dual citizenship combination that you can strike in today's day and age. And as I said, with the APEC, you have direct business access to Australia, New Zealand, Russia, South Korea, Japan, Malaysia, Singapore, so many countries which are going to be very beneficial for you and your family. And the most important thing to remember here is if you aren't subscribed, then subscribe to this channel right now so you don't miss out on any latest developments and updates. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and catch you in the next one.